Hey guys, this is Captain Frugal reporting for you. I hope you're having a wonderful day. This is going to be the weekly comic book review for February 8th, 2023. All right, everybody here that is new to the channel, if you just popped in and are unfamiliar, what I do is I grab a, a bunch of comic books and I give you my review for the week. I don't have time to read or the money to read every single comic book that has been released, so please cut me a little slack there. Uh, I can only do so much. Now, with that said, I look at them all, I show you, and give you a little quick, quick review of them, and I give them a score of 0 through 10. 10 being, this is a must-have for everybody, 7 means average, so you're going to find most are in the 7 average. You're also going to... Hear that? Hear my notes, because I use some paper notes as well, some digital notes. So I go slightly old school on, in that regard. <laughs> so with that said, let's get going. We're going to start today with my top three comics. Are you ready? My you ready? Here we go. My number three pick was Avengers War Across Time. Number two, I gave it a 7.6. Once again, that's Avengers War Across Time. 7.2 out of six you know this comic is a great for giving you that old nostalgia rub there we have thor iron man captain america giant man and the wasps the original avengers invade the baxter building and break the barriers between worlds will willie lumpkin unleash a dangerous menace can thor lose mjolnir mjolnir can i pronounce mjolnir right today <laughs> will eisner hall of famer paul levitz and legendary ex-artist alan davis successfully channel the classic heroes adventures question mark yeah, actually, they do. They channel them well. This book has good art, a fun story, and really an old-school classic style. And I think the characterization really fits the characters for that time. This is a good series so far. So if you're looking for something more of the old-school, Avengers War Across Time should fit that itch. I gave this book. You ready? It deserves it. A 7.6. Yeah, 7.6. All right, going to my number two, because number two is far from a number two. Number two is also quite a good book. Though I will say I wasn't the biggest fan of the cover of this issue, but the story in it did not disappoint. And that is none other than Joe Fixit number two. Peter David's return to one of his most iconic Hulk stories continues. Everyone wants to know who the mysterious Joe Fixit really is, and Spider-Man is on the case. If you're not familiar, Hulk for a period was gray. It was an interesting time. The art was a little rough during that period of time, in my opinion, but the stories were neat. Joe Fixit is a different style Hulk. Not quite as strong as the original Hulk, but much more crafty and mean, if you will. Well, anyway, Kingpin wants Las Vegas' toughest enforcer working for him instead of the competition, and he's prepared to make Joe fixing an offer that he can't refuse but spider-man is certain that still bruce banner under that grizzled gray exterior and he's not ready quite yet to let bruce go down the path where that he won't be able to come back from so my thoughts on this story well i'm going to tell you right away is my number two so i think you got a good idea because number two doesn't give it credit right this was almost number one i might say it's a fun issue great banter the artwork wasn't the best in my opinion but it wasn't bad kingpin really makes a bold move in this issue and the first issue i mean hulk gave kingpin a thumping it was great and this series has so far been wonderful makes me wonder why is peter david not writing the regular hulk story once again but then maybe maybe it's just the direction that marvel has is messing it up and it's best to leave him in these sort of side stories where he can do probably what he wants because this has been a fun series so if you're a fan of gray hulk this is for you heck if you're a fan of hulk at all you probably should be checking this out because this is better than the actual ongoing hulk series right now all right are we ready for my number one? Oh, by the way joe fix it got an 8.3 <laughs> my number one pick are you ready number one is Flash number 792, where I gave it an 8.5. Boy, Flash has continued to really treat us good. Flash has been a good title. Very few issues that I thought maybe dropped a little bit in quality here and there, but even then, they haven't ever really been bad. We're dealing still with the One Minute War Part 3, Impulse Buy. Boy, I tell you, I like the, the coupling here that we're getting when we get the dialogue between Impulse and Kid Flash. I think they would make a tremendous series or mini-series of them working together. They would just, they're fun to, when you group them together. 
pulling away the Flash families in dire straits as the Fraction began their takeover. Looking for a way to push them back, Impulse has an idea. Oh boy, right? The kind of idea that usually gets people in trouble, because when it's Impulse, his name is Impulse for a reason. It's up to Kid Flash to keep him company in a daring mission that could turn the tide against the extraterrestrial threat. I'm telling you, this is a fun issue. Solid art, great dialogue with all the flashes, fun story. This really is a good series. Flash continues to be great. If you've been thinking, should I try the Flash? Should I read the Flash? I would go back to the first part of the One Minute War and start reading it because this has been a fun series. Once again, I recommend strongly getting this an 8.5. This is definitely one that you're going to want to get if you're a Flash fan, DC fan, or just want to try something that has a high potential of being great. Speaking of being great, these videos would not be possible without this team here, with this group of great people that help provide and take care of this channel through Patreon and Subscribestar. If you don't have the ability to help the channel for just a little over a dollar a month, that's okay too. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, it helps spread this channel. Any helps this channel has been seeing some growth for some reason lately. We got a little bit of surge here, we're starting to get some growth and picking up, and I think, and I say for some reason, I mean that's awesome, because it seemed like we were struggling in the analytics for a while, but now they're starting to help us a little bit and you can continue to help that with pushing and helping the channel as well. So by the way, anybody that does help the channel does get special perks, special videos, music, and special discounts on things that I can give you and help you out as well by being part of the community. Thank you for joining the Frugal Force and thank these people because they are awesome. All right, with that said, we still have the bottom and the middle. So let's get to the bottom. Let's go to the ones that, the, the, the stinkers, stinkers, shall we? we? Uh, my number three, and believe it or not, even the stinkers this week aren't that bad. So that makes me happy to see. It's a good week when you know the stinkers aren't even that bad, usually because the bad are really bad. And my number three at the bottom is Gold Goblin number four. I gave it a 7.02. Once again, that's Gold Goblin number four. Norman was handed his first losses through Dark Web, which to be honest, we all lost during Dark Web because Dark Web sucked. But he's not able to make it a habit. His first target, Jack-O-Lantern. But, it's, but is Norman still in someone else's crosshairs? Yes, the answer, by the way, is yes. With this new zeal, will this new zeal lead him down the dark path that we all know he's headed towards? I like that they even admit, yeah, we all know he's headed towards a dark path, so we better believe it. I'm not a fan of the gold goblin costume. The outfit looks a little lame. Uh, but you know what? The story's not been bad considering the subject matter. Christopher Cartwell's been doing well. The art's been okay. So really, I got that saying. So for the bottom of the barrel with a 7.02, really doesn't mean this book is bad. Norman has been framed. It's a decent story, and the art is pretty good too. So even at the bottom, this is one that if you're really interested in Norman, you might want to check it out. Otherwise, you know, I think this is not going to have any real long-term ramifications. He's probably going to end up going to evil eventually. It'd be a mistake probably if he didn't. But that's what it is. All right, now to hit my number two. Oh boy, this one has series has been consistently disappointing. Yeah, consistently disappointing. And I'm not alone. It seems like that the consensus is pretty pretty similar to for that as well. And that's Amazing Spider-Man number 19. I gave it a 7.01. Uh, looking at some of the trends right now that I'm seeing online, you know, it says only have 74 out of 130 people liked it. That means Spider-Man has been going in the wrong direction under Joe Kelly. People just aren't liking it. it just ain't working. Dark Web is over. Thank goodness, because Dark Web sucked. But the effects will shake Spider-Man for a long time. Sure they will. To recover, Peter Parker and Felicia Hardy, a.k.a. who doesn't know, the Black Cat escapes from the city to an exclusive spa in the... Uh, in the cat skills it says what the heck does that mean right surely trouble won't follow our web head of course it will this is a comic book and ruin his romantic getting get away of course it will that's comics join superstar guest creative team joe kelly and terry dodson for this special two-parter where spidey and the black cat take their next steps and no one tries to kill them yet okay well, we'll say this this is definitely better than the run that we've been getting in amazing spider-man Okay, but the dialogue is pretty bad. I mean, we have spider splain, spider splaining. Ugh, can't even say it. spider splaining. Ugh, yucky. The art is decent in this issue. Still nothing great. Mediocre puns throughout the issue. It's an okay story though. Definitely better than Dark Web. So this issue got a 7.01. So I'm not saying this is a jumping on point for Spider-Man. I'm not definitely not saying that. But I will say this is making dark. You know, make. Putting Dark Web in the past, hopefully it stays there forever because Dark Web just was not good. All right, and then my number, well, let's get this nice, number one, 
which is disappointing because I actually like this character, is Captain America Symbol of Truth number 10. I gave it a 7, just bare minimum average. See, this week's bad isn't exactly that terrible. Cap vs. Falcon. Yeah, no, I say that I mean Sam Wilson Cap, which was Falcon, fighting the new Falcon, which nobody cares about. Once again, what makes Sam Wilson Falcon and just make him cool? You can even keep him in this new suit, keep him with the shield, that's cool and all, but make him Falcon. Having multiple characters with the same name really doesn't make a lot of sense, especially in this situation. They're using, put them together, by the way, is a great team. Captain America and Falcon are awesome together, and they have them, let them have their separate books, too. Sure, why not? Both these are great characters. So anyway, we have when Falcon arrives, and, and uh, he's dealing with these rampaging effects from White Wolf's chemical attack. It's up to Captain America to save his friend, or stop Falcon from hurting anybody else in this heartbreaking showdown between partners. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Heartbreaking showdown between partners. We haven't really seen much of this Falcon, so there's not much heartbreaking here. In order to have a story really hit, we have to actually know those characters when something bad happens to them. We really don't get much of Falcon, so this was too fast, too soon to have this. I didn't feel the heartbreak, but maybe I'm wrong there. Do you feel the heartbreak of this issue if you've read it? When, he has to, when Sam has to take on the new Falcon and bring him down, do you feel sadness that he had to beat him down? Come on now. If you did, let me know. I want to know, but for me, I didn't feel it. I don't like this Falcon. Matter of fact, I'm fine with killing this Falcon off so we can give the Falcon back to Sam Wilson and have him be his own cool character that they've built up. But we know it's not going to happen because the MCU is now, of course, pushing Sam Wilson as Captain America. So we're not going to see that, and I get that. And as I said, Sam Wilson is a great character. So for any of the haters out there who think automatically I'm just hating, you know, because I'm a bad person, I am a huge Captain America and Falcon fan. I have Captain America and Falcon action figures in my office, in my comic room, too. Huge fan falcon fan okay he's a great character and i thought they did him great in the movies it's just sad of how they they finally took him when he was hitting his height of popularity and shifted him under another name they're missing out on a great opportunity with this great character so anyway with that said the writing staff the art staff well okay i know this is my bottom okay i get that and but it did get a seven bear with me in mind it got a seven but the it's action-packed i'll give it that and the art is solid but there's not really any real story progression here. It's just not bad, but it's not great either. That's why it only achieves an average. That's really all it is, average. All right, well, there we have my bottom. So now let's hit the middle, the ones that didn't quite fit in either of those. And one of those is, ready? Daredevil number eight. You know, I'm having really a lot of hopes for this, but this one just missed missed the mark of really what I thought it could be, which is a shame because I don't know why Daredevil's got me hyped. I guess I like classic Daredevil versus Punisher. It's a war. Really, that's all this issue is. It's a war. It's good art, good action. And next issue, though, Daredevil may have to fight Captain America. I'm looking forward to that. But it's odd to me that these superheroes, Daredevil, Spider-Man, Iron Man and all, are gearing up to go against Stop Daredevil. I know he, re um, he released villains and things like that. But uh, they're ignoring the Punisher situation completely? Man, go figure. I gave this issue a 7.2, Daredevil number 8. So if you're into the Daredevil thing, check it out. I know the Punisher situation aggravates me because, you know, we don't get... We get in a weird version of Punisher. But, hey, we'll see what happens. The next one is a series that's also been consistently good, but it pissed me off this issue. Pissed me off this issue. And that's Ghost Rider number 11. I gave it a 7.03. Okay, and this one we have Hellfire, it says, and Danny Catch in the previews for it. That's the kicker, though. We do not get any Danny in this issue. That's my biggest kick to this. It's a supernatural road trip in this issue, but, and I'm really disappointed, though. The art was good. This tends to be a bit of a filler issue. The cover is misleading. The marketing for it is misleading. It's a good story, don't get me wrong, but when you sit there telling everybody that Danny Catch is going to be there, and they show him on the cover going after you know our hero Johnny Blaze for some reason chasing after him in his rearview mirror and you don't have Danny in the issue you did something really misleading and that's why that one that really I gave it a hit I gave it a point reduction for that I thought I did not like that move I did not like that misleading so it, it cost that issue it sure did all right another one in the middle was Batman number 32 I gave Batman number 32 a 7.3 you know, Batman's been DC's 
title of keeping it alive. Let's be honest, without Batman, DC would be in some trouble. They can try to brag about comic sales all you want, but there's a lot of misinterpretations there in comic sales that they try to use. Like, oh, comics of growing. Well, what they don't tell you a lot, though, is things like they're talking comics sold maybe to the stores, but the stores still have to actually sell those. Okay, But still, nonetheless, Batman's been a good, strong, consistent seller, even if it didn't hit my top. This is Batman issue 32 with a 7.3. Solid art. The story is okay, though. But the thing is, is we've seen this before. We've seen Batman shot away to a different time period or different places before, not even that long ago. And during that time, Tim Drake didn't believe it happened and sought after finding him. We're getting the same exact thing here. Now, I'm not going to say it's not an interesting alternate story where he's in a different kind of universe, if you will, in the multiverse. I get that. But we've seen this. What is good, though, about this issue, what is really good about this issue is Tim Drake. We're actually seeing Tim Drake as Tim Drake in this issue. He's going, you know, he doesn't believe it. He doesn't believe Batman's gone. He cares about Batman. He's doing his search for Batman. Tim Drake is a smart character. He's drawn better here. He's perceived and, and written better here than he has been in his own title. Tim Drake's Robin title is absolute garbage. If you want to read decent Tim Drake Robin, read this. This is much better. I got uh, uh, somebody disagreed me in the comment section of the last video that I did with the had the review of Tim Drake Robin, and he had a disagreement that I said that the relationship with Tim Drake and his boyfriend Bernard seems forced and it just doesn't make any sense based on the history of Robin. And this person put, oh, I see it perfect. It seems so. Uh, so perfect and built up properly what seemed forced was stephanie brown i'm like are you kidding me even in the robin books and the series before bernard was in to tim drake's stepmom he had the hots for her. how dumb can that be this person clearly had not read any of the robin at all but people do that you know they just got to defend things without any you know, thought. And they were like, I read all the Robins. I thought clearly you did not, or you don't have reading comprehension. There was never anything in there, but that's my little personal gripe there about that issue. But once again, Batman 32, if you want to see some good, some good Tim Drake Robin, check that one out. That's where you're going to get it. All right. My next one that didn't meet, meet the top or the bottom was Joker. The man who stopped laughing issue number five with a strong 7.4 knock, knock. Who's there. That's what the Joker's trying to find out. But as he closes in on the man he thinks is pretending to be him, Jason Todd is right on his heels, and Jason has got a great joke about a little kid in a crowbar. Maybe you've heard it before. It kills. <laughs> With that said, though, I am enjoying this. I'm a big Jason Todd fan, so this, you know, this gets me involved. And I like this, that we don't really know which Joker is the right Joker, necessarily, and they're going against each other. Though I will say there is some cliche things here. Interesting watching the Joker fight. The clay face thing was definitely predictable in that. The story is still interesting, though. It has decent art. The side story continues to be a silly story that's more of a throwaway piece of garbage. This was no different. Uh, at least we didn't get a pregnant Joker, sort of pregnant Joker. Not really Joker pregnant, but they sort of insinuated just a dumb thing there altogether. Nonetheless, I like the dialogue in this issue as well, especially with Jason Todd and Stephanie Brown. That was it's interesting seeing that dynamic build there with those characters. I'm liking that. I like Stephanie Brown. She's a great character. It's nice that she's starting to get more use. Hopefully she'll continue to get more use and be in good situations in the DC universe. All right, so that's my top, my bottom, and my middle books. What did I miss? What should I have read? What are your thoughts? Give me your scores on some of those issues. Or if you disagree with me, that's okay too. I might talk about it like that, especially if you don't make any sense, but we can have a disagreement there. As I said, I don't think that person that disagreed with me on the Rodman book was an idiot or anything. I just don't believe they actually read it like they claimed they did. And if they did, I don't think they understood what they read. But that's just me. You're allowed to disagree. Take care, everyone. You have a wonderful day. You are all amazing. And until next time, you know what the words are. Keep it brutal!